Mandarin Chinese is known as one of the most difficult languages in the world to learn. An extremely complex graphic system consisting of thousands of characters, each with its own meaning, as well as phonetic tones that allow for a meaning of the word to change regarding the said tone. However, despite its difficulties, Mandarin is gaining popularity across the world with China's growing wealth and influence. I personally know a bunch of parents willing to teach their children Chinese by sending them off to special schools and camps. However, I digress. Did you ever wonder how they spell foreign product names in China with their complex graphical system? Let's find out. Without further ado, let's get started. So, let's get back to the basics. Each symbol has its own meaning, so you can't just create a new one or come up with something already existing, much like they do in Japanese with their katakana alphabet. But when a foreign company enters the Chinese market, they need to find a totally new name to represent their product. Not only so that the locals would be able to spell it properly, but also so that they could pronounce it. After all, the tonal system exists for a reason, and a wrong one could lead to a word changing its meaning, which, well, may not be that nice. With that, finding a way to the Chinese customers' hearts might turn into a nightmare and ruin a company's potential and future on the Chinese market. The thing is that each Chinese symbol stands for a single word or a concept for that matter. So just transliterating a name into the Chinese language is basically impossible. There is no word for lace or iPhone, for example. So companies have to be a little bit more creative when it comes to finding a new name for their products. Here is a table of some Western car brands and their Chinese names. I'm not even gonna try to, to pronounce them, as, well, I don't speak Mandarin. Companies take different approaches when it comes to finding a new name. So, there are several strategies on how a foreign company finds a new Chinese name for itself. This strategy, a company replicates its name using Chinese characters as closely as possible. The literal translation doesn't have a meaningful definition, but still it's recognizable. For example, such approach was taken by Adidas. Some companies choose characters with related meanings, trying to accentuate its product's qualities. For example, the Chinese name of Procter & Gamble Head & Shoulders shampoo lineup actually means flying silk of the sea. Sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? This strategy means a step away from the traditional brand name. However, it also means that a company creates a strong association with something it, well, wants to be associated with. For example, the international hotel chain Marriott refused localizing its name and instead went for this. Nothing like in English, however, the name itself is, well, pretty fitting. It means grand or million, which represents a luxurious hotel pretty well. One of the best examples of combining naming approaches is Coca-Cola. When they first entered the Chinese market in 1927, they went for this, which can be translated as makes mouths happy, or sometimes even as joy or yummy. It's one of the best naming localization examples to this day. It becomes even more interesting when a Chinese company wants to enter the international market and, well, has to do the same thing. Much like the Westerners struggling to find a suitable name for an average Chinese Joe to spell and read, Chinese companies have to develop several strategies regarding their names for the international market, which can become a real challenge at times. One of the simplest solutions to that is to simply write your Chinese name with the letters of the Latin alphabet and off you go. This way we got Xiaomi and Huawei. However, as a Russian, I'd like to point out that sometimes this may not be a good idea. The Huawei name sounds really weird to Russian speakers. It took the company a little bit more time to establish itself a reputation of a manufacturer of some reliable tech. Get behind the left, so to say. Another approach is phonetic, which is simply turning a Chinese name into something more Western. For example, the Tencent hauling went from this to, well, this. Sounds pretty Western, don't you think? However, I personally think that companies should be a little bit more careful with this approach. And there is an example. One of the largest Chinese car manufacturers, Havel, has introduced a new model for the Russian market, and they call it Joe Lion. 
Officially, the name is made of two words, Joy and Lion. I personally have no idea what they tried saying with this name, however, many Russian internet users, as well as car bloggers and journalists, have mentioned that this name sounds, well, weird, to the very least. On its home market, the compact SUV is called this. Take a closer look at the pinion. And then try to pronounce it. It's similar, isn't it? Apple simply took the same approach as Western companies trying to enter the Chinese market. I personally think they should have just kept it Chulian or just find a new European name instead of doing, well, this. That's it for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like button, subscribe, and share the video to your friends. Have a nice day and see you later. Thank you.